cooking together, I think it's wonderful because it's forced teamwork and you figure things out in the kitchen and potentially that could carry through after the meal to the bedroom. Take a girl and a guy and they fall madly in love and form a family. Sprinkle in some counseling degrees and a doctorate, a dream of transforming relationships as we know it. And 20 years later, we give you power couple, Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. And this is their podcast, Couples Synergy. And welcome back to another episode of Couples Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean. Hi, I'm Dr. Ray. And I'm Jean. And this is our podcast about love, marriage, and relationships. Check us out online at couplesynergy.com or on Facebook and Instagram at Couples Synergy or on Twitter or on LinkedIn. And- kind of anywhere. And please subscribe to our podcast, leave us a review or send us any suggestions on topics you'd like to hear more about. And now on to Couple Synergy, an in-depth look at love, marriage and relationships, where we bring you our experience helping thousands of couples transform their relationships for over 20 years. You know, everyone says you should work on your relationship, but nobody teaches us how. So we've created this podcast to teach people what they can do to create the relationship they've always dreamed of with the partner they fell in love with. On today's episode, we are very excited to welcome Amy Riley. She's best known as an authority on aphrodisiac foods. That's fun. That's very fun. (laughs) But she is also a speaker, cookbook author and consultant, as well as a freelance wine writer and wine Mm. competition judge. She's authored two books, Fork Me, Spoon Me, The Central Cookbook and Chile Aphrodisia. We want to welcome you, Amy, to the show. Thank you so much for being on our podcast today. Hi there. Thanks for having me. By the way, I've realized I've written five books. Oh, oh what are the other titles? Okay. So authored. Um, so there was so Fort Me Spoon Me and Chili Aphrodisia were my very first two. Um, I have a book called Romancing the Stove. Um, I co-authored a book called The Love Diet, which is no longer on the market, unfortunately. And my latest book, which is ebook only is called Eat Cake Naked. Eat Cake Naked. Yes. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is a lot of fun. We are really excited to do this podcast because, you know, we actually have been experimenting with food recently. Oh, so, excellent. Yeah. In the last uh, year and a half, we have moved to Colorado, Western Colorado, mm-hmm. and from Chicagoland area. And one of the things that's a challenge out here is altitude. Yeah, it's a ve- yes, it's very different. Yeah, so we've been trying to learn how to cook at altitude, and right. you know, this is kind of right up our alley because we work with relationships and aphrodisiac foods is going to be awesome. That's nice to talk about. So I, I learned how to cook in the army, <laughs> so I have oh. no skills at oh. all. <laughs> I'm trying to master some things. We've been watching some some cooking shows like those competitions. Right. And we love food, but yep. neither one of us really ever learned how to cook. You've been mastering the the Traeger grill. Yeah, the smoking. Yeah. I, oh, I'm nice. starting with marinara sauce. I yeah. did that. <laughs> marinara is good. That, yeah. I mean, that works for a lot of things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so how did you get into this? So I... I really need to like fabricate some fabulous story because I don't have one. (laughs) Basically I was working as a freelance wine writer and, you know, as you mentioned, wine is, is my passion. I do still do some work in that area, but um, it was at a time where I needed to find more work. I needed to diversify and I kind of looked at, okay, what part of wine and food is a fit for me. And I happen to love Greek mythology. I happen to have a great deal of interest in the health side of food. And I kind of fell into this topic of aphrodisiacs because it kind of combines folklore, mythology, and health um, into this very, you know, interesting and fun area um, of food. So I came to it from a food standpoint, not a wanting to help couples. It was more of I wanted to give people ideas on how to eat better and enjoy food more. And I felt like, well, if I tell them, you know, this is, this is going to get them laid. <laughs> Maybe they would, <laughs> they'd make better food choices and it's, it works. I'll tell you. <laughs> okay. So it is not just myth and folklore. There is actually right. a science yes. behind yes. aphrodisiac foods. Yes. Can you explain that? What does that mean? 
Well, honestly, it, it, when it comes right down to it, most of it is simply nutrition. Um, I mean, there are a few other factors and there are, have been some fascinating studies that have gone beyond that. Um, and of course, there is always a psychological element to all of this. Um, but if you look at cultures in which aphrodisiacs were a huge part of their lives, m most of those cultures had a food shortage. There wasn't really enough food. So they weren't going to be, they weren't going to waste it. You knew they saw some significant result in order to label these foods as aphrodisiacs and use them in this way, because a lot of them were very special foods. Um, and if you look at a lot of those foods now with what we know about nutrition science, they just contain nutrients that support sexual health, that help raise, you know, libido, um, that support fertility, all of these things. And often they're nutrients that we don't necessarily get enough of if we're eating mm. the average on the go kind of diet. Mm. So it's sort of like a, a, a sensual experience as well as a support in the body. Yes, definitely. Mm. Fabulous. We love that. <laughs> yeah. Right. So maybe you, just, you can tell us a little bit about you know, aphrodisiac foods, or how do you kind of support a diet that is going to support your libido and your sexual sure. health? So I like to approach aphrodisiacs from a few different angles, depending on what's your goal. So if it is to have a romantic dinner, um, either a romantic dinner to seduce someone, a new partner, or a romantic dinner for a couple that just needs that sort of extra spark or re some reconnecting, um, you know, I would suggest different, a different approach than if you just want to maintain sexual health. Um, for people who want to maintain sexual health, I actually created a list for men and a list for women because what mm -hmm. we need is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, I put them on my website, eatsomethingsexy.com. It's actually, um, it's an aphrodisiac foods website that I run. We have many, many writers with different specialties, but um, my, um, our nutritional director, her name is Delana Flagg, she's a PhD in nutrition. She and I came up with these lists for men and for women of the 10 foods, the 10 best foods to focus on eating for maintaining sexual health. Um, so for women, and we also made them, we wanted to make them things, we wanted things that are tasty in there, of course, and we wanted things that are easy to obtain, not too expensive. So they're fairly basic items, but they're fun. Like for example, for women, we've got peanuts and dark chocolate on the list, as mm -hmm. well as strawberries and chili peppers and citrus fruits. So, you know, things that you can get in any grocery store. Mm -hmm. And for men, there are things on there like salmon. Um, let's see, what else is on the men's list? Why am I, oh, almonds. I just updated the article on almonds. Almonds are wonderful for men's sexual health, both libido and, um, you know, both sex drive and, and sexual health. So that's kind of, that's an awesome one. Um, we did put on the men's list, we put bison oh. because we wanted to kind of steer people away from beef a little bit, but we wanted them to give that, give that sort of, you know, that same sensation as beef and bison is a great choice. Why would uh, peanuts and chocolate, I mean, we've heard chocolate, you know, everyone hears chocolate is an aphrodisiac, <laughs> but why, why are peanuts and chocolate important for women's sexual health? What does it do, you know, biologically for women? Um, so chocolate, first of all, there's, you know, some evidence that chocolate is a, is a mood enhancer. Mm -hmm. So that's always helpful. Um, Sometimes women need that extra something to, to get, you need to be in, you know, a good mood, a relaxed mood to get into the mood. So that's helpful. Um, chocolate is also loaded, dark chocolates. We, I need to specify dark chocolate is also loaded with uh, antioxidants um, and also has magnesium. So, you know, there are new, certain nutrients uh, in, in dark chocolate and the same thing with peanuts, nutrients that are, are great for women's health. And honestly, I haven't, I, uh, the peanuts, I can't tell you off that. I want to, I want to say folate is one of them. Like that's what immediately what comes to my head. Why it was specifically for women was uh, partially the folate, but I'm not positive that is true because 
I have two little kids and sometimes things just jumble in my head, you know? (laughs) (laughs) So I just want to like, before I tell you for sure, that's it. I just want to preface that. I believe that's one of them, but also there are some, you know, very basic, obvious reasons like peanuts are a good source of plant based protein and you need protein for energy. And a lot of times women aren't getting enough protein. And if you could have a snack, that's a good protein source. It's a great idea. Peanuts also have fiber. Mm -hmm. A lot of the foods on our list are high fiber foods and people don't realize it, but fiber help keeps you sexy. (laughs) So, you know, some of it is as simple as that. And some of it is nutrients that are very specific to uh, maintaining the correct levels of female uh, women's hormones or men's hormones. So, so a diet that is like um, the carnivore diet or the, you know, the really heavy meat diets, yeah. they don't have enough fiber. It's funny. I was just, I got into a long conversation with someone who's a, a certified keto um, consultant about mm-hmm. these kind of things. And that was one question she would never answer. I kept asking her, how, how does that work? And she, she was just very evasive about it. It's, it's not, honestly, I don't. You know, I don't want to say these things are wrong. I know people have had very positive results for the, from them. But from the perspective of a healthy sex life, I, I just can't imagine. I can't. I can't. I'm not a proponent. <laughs> well, fiber keeps everything going. Yes. It keeps everything moving. <laughs> and that's what we're talking about is increasing an in energy and a drive in your body. So that makes yes. sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm surprised that um, oysters are not on the list. Oh, so, well, for sure. Oysters are great. They are absolutely, they, they would make any list of great aphrodisiacs, but these were lists of like things to eat every day Mm. for men and for women. And for most of us eating oysters every day is unrealistic. Um, and also oysters are one of those foods you don't, it's not that eventually like the purines and things can, can build up. You don't really necessarily want to eat oysters every day. Mm. Um, I could eat them every day. They're really delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a friend who got gout from eating oysters oh, every day. Wow. Really? Wow. Yeah, I think he ate a lot of oysters every day. But yes, it's, I mean, there's, you know, the whole thing. I hate the word moderation, but it, it's true about mm-hmm. pretty Balance. much everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so oysters would absolutely make the list, but they're not realistically an everyday food for most of us. Mm. Um, they are definitely aphrodisiac and they are also a lot of fun and for people who enjoy or i should preface this for people who enjoy oysters uh they're a fun food they're an indulgent food as well as the fact that they have a great deal of nutrition to support sexual health they're one of those high protein foods like we talked about they're you know it's digestible reasonably digestible protein it's high protein low fat um yeah oysters are amazing that being said, you brought me to like the other side of it, the non-nutrition side, which is when you're planning a romantic evening, mm. you have to think not just about, you know, hitting the list of the top aphrodisiacs. You have to think about what your partner is going to enjoy. Mm. If I serve my husband oysters, we're not going to have a good evening. <laughs> <laughs> it's just because he doesn't like it. It just, it's not good for him. Okay. Them. Yeah, I mean, for me, the top, like, please just serve me champagne and oysters. I'm good. Um, And he would not want either of those things. Mm. So, yeah. (laughs) One of the first homework assignments we give couples when we're working with them is to create a dinner together. Mm. And we're like, we want you to have the most delicious dinner you guys can figure out with multiple courses. And and then we give them a, a list of questions to talk about over dinner. Is your book something that would be helpful in that situation? Like, do you have recipes in there? Oh, absolutely. So of all of my books, the one that I'm most in love with the recipes is Romancing the Stove. So if you specifically just want aphrodisiac recipes, that would be the one. If you want a great balance of like information about aphrodisiacs and aphrodisiac recipes, then fork me, spoon me. and then if you're just a sweet tooth like me, uh, that's why I created Eat Cake Naked. It's all desserts. Mm. <laughs> so if you just want a meal of desserts and they're healthy, the majority of them 
have some healthful component that would like support your sexual health. So they're not just dessert. Like my brown, my brownie recipe, which by the way, is like the most indulgent, delicious brownie recipe. It has um, nuts, dried cherries and chickpea flour. Oh, so okay. it's not just sugar and cocoa powder and white flour. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we we've been doing some of that, like trying to do because uh, we love pizza, so mm -hmm. we've been doing more of the cauliflower pizza, and sure. then and then of course I add some stuff to it. This is why I started cooking marinara because oh, I sauce. I love that, and then I add it to the pizza. Yes, and what I what I find interesting because I'm not I really have never cooked in my life. <laughs> it's pretty sad. <laughs> Except when I'm on a diet, that's the only time I cook, and that's not yummy food. No. So knowing the ingredients that's in there, because you're like, well, this jar has sugar in it mm -hmm. of marinara mm -hmm. sauce. Right. And and we're trying to do that, have more where we know the ingredients in our foods. More control, yes. So I need, I need that book. Yeah. <laughs> to try to fix. But, you know, great. we have the altitude issue, which is interesting. Yeah. Does that affect, does that affect the cauliflower crust, too? It, it the one where we tried to buy just the crust we couldn't make that I've never yeah. made it from scratch. I've oh, only, it's so easy! It's oh, so I easy. have to try it <laughs> <laughs> because I hate vegetables. So, like, if I know if I make marinara, I will puree the onion and then I'm fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so if I, it, it's more texture for me, so if right. I do that, then I'm good. Oh, that's you my work. Try now. my. I have a um. I call it my truffle lasagna and it's in romancing the stove and it's, um, it's a mushroom lasagna. Only you have no idea. My husband hates mushrooms. He likes my lasagna and he didn't know until I was demonstrating the recipe on the today show. He had no idea there were mushrooms in it. That's what I need. That's yeah. exactly what yeah. I need. Have you heard of, um, mud water? No. And not that I really need to promote this <laughs> brand, but there's several things like that. There's a couple other ones. It, it's basically a powder of mushrooms and cocoa. Oh. Like reishi mushrooms, I think. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And so I've been using that and I'll just put it in some tea, like a little scoop of that. And, yeah. and it kind of says the same kind of thing. Like this is good for your mood. It's good for yes. your health. Absolutely. So I should try cooking with that. With with that powder, yeah. Oh, I think I would honestly. I think I'd prefer cooking with it than putting it in my tea because it sounds to me like it might make your tea taste a little like dirt. It, it, yeah, it, it does. does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> it does. And, and you get a big chunk of powder. You're like, <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. So oh, cooking with water. it in a nice savory application, like mm. a mushroom risotto or a or a lasagna or something. Yeah, that could work. Oh, very, I love the Italian well. food. Oh, or chili. Put it in a pot of chili. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So you could you could do bison in lasagna as well, right? Absolutely, or so, chili. Since we're on right. that, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. one of the things that I've noticed is that um, cheese, right? So I was mm -hmm. trying a recipe, and it said, "Here's a pro tip: don't buy shredded cheese. It's got okay. stuff on it." that doesn't melt properly. And I'm like, oh, that's a game changer. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's a lot of things with processed foods right. that we don't really know what we're trading off right. from working with more organic stuff. Yep, yep. You know, we, uh... I, just, I just updated my article on organic foods, like the benefits of, of eating organic. And, and what probably doesn't occur to most people is that it actually benefits your sex life to choose organic foods. It's not mm. just supporting a healthy planet and animal welfare and all of those things. Um, there are some studies that, you know, show some, some benefits that, that will directly impact your sex life. Is that just because the uh, chemicals that they use, preservatives, you know, that- Pesticides. Right, it, it just kind of gums up the system and- No, oddly, it's, it's not so much about that is the fact that, um, they found organically grown uh, fruits and vegetables. A lot of them are higher in antioxidants. Um, and I'm not sure they found the exact reason. It's all fairly recent research. Um, also organic meats, um, they tend to be more nutritious 
as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's not necessarily, I mean, I know, you know, you don't want to get the extra hormones in the meat, but also they just have more omegas and, and things like that. So, um, yeah. Have you sex life. or read the book, The Celestine Prophecy? I have not. So in there, they talk about growing vegetables and they had this study where one field of the vegetables, they would go in and talk to them and love them. Mm -hmm. And the other one, they would just do all of the basic taking care of water, feeding them yeah. identically the same. Right. And I would think that organic food is loved as it's growing more mm -hmm. than non-organic. And, and that might be a part of why the nutritional, because that's what they found is the nutritional that, that could value be. is higher. Yeah. Yes. Interesting stuff that's out there that we know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, for men, a lot of men out there, they suffer with ED, you know, right. erectile dysfunction, and that is uh, correlated with heart health. Right. And so I, I imagine like keeping a healthy diet is mm -hmm. systemically, it's going to be helpful for you, but then also it's going to affect libido directly. It does completely. Yes. All of those, all, all of the foods that you know of that are good for heart health, like they talk about oats and um, red wine and all of it's all particularly for men, but also for women, because we do neglect the fact that women uh, need to support heart health and sexual health as well. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, they're all going to benefit. Every single one of those things also benefits your sexual health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for women, leading cause of death is heart disease. Right. Currently. Yeah. Okay. So salmon, why salmon? for men I'm, I'm aware. um again it's a healthy lean form of protein right mm -hmm. you're not getting all of the saturated fat but you're getting the energy you need for exercise including bedroom calisthenics um <laughs> <laughs> it's a good source of omega-3 fatty acids which uh, are mood enhancing we talked about that you know you need to have a good mood, um, and they and it ha it contains other nutrients that are also good for uh, men's sexual health um, and sexual performance. So salmon, salmon made the list. When you're looking at forms of protein that are great for your sexual health, um, seafood, seafood is good, and salmon is is just one of the more common forms of seafood and easy to get sustainable salmon and all of that. So I, I imagine that. You know, clarifying getting wild caught salmon is better right. than farm raised. Correct. Right. Yes. Yes. If you want to go on to eat something sexy.com, I dive into exactly that and break down the reasons why um, in the article on salmon for men. Yes. And Great. you know, it's interesting. And I don't know if it, it's connected at all, but what a salmon goes through in their sex life is pretty interesting. They, they have to fight pretty hard. They do. To get yeah. To, yeah. It's a lot of work. <laughs> and maybe that's, that's a piece of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So, so tell us more, tell us more about uh, aphrodisiac foods and kind of cooking oh. together as a couple, yeah. you know, we, uh, we interviewed the, the writer and founder of uh, the adventure challenge. And, oh. That, that is a, you know, it's a book for couples it's got different date ideas, date yes. night ideas on there and you scratch it off. And, you know, one of the date night ideas is cooking together, mm -hmm. but one of the, your partner, your partner's being blindfolded. No. <laughs> I well, yeah, that that's what it is. Yeah. Your, your, your partner's blindfolded and, you know, you're kind of. I no think sharp making things. A pie. No sharp things. Making it a pie. Oh no! I didn't know. No, no, there's. They're nothing. like making a pie or something. Yeah. And they have okay. To make the dough and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it's just you know cooking together can be a lot of fun. Yes. You know, and if you are incorporating these aphrodisiac foods into your cooking, I imagine it could be much more fun. Right. Well, I always encourage it. You know, when people ask, "What should we do for Valentine's Day?" or "What should we do for date night?" I fully support the idea of, of cooking something together. Um, just because unless, you know, I don't want people to feel overwhelmed by the planning of it. And if that is a hurdle for you, then this, this isn't for you. But if you can get over that part of it, um, cooking together, I think it's wonderful because you get in a rhythm together. It's forced teamwork. 
Mm -hmm. And maybe you haven't had a lot of teamwork with each other recently. Um, and you get into this wonderful rhythm and you figure things out in the kitchen and, you know, potentially that could carry through after the meal to the bedroom. Mm -hmm. When we um, have couples that maybe they have a lot of small children in the house and that's really kind of not an option, we have them go out for dinner, mm -hmm. but they have to go somewhere they've never been and they have to only eat one plate at a time and share it. And so I would imagine the things in your book would also guide them towards what they should choose right. when right. they're ordering from a restaurant. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. it, it works wherever you're, where, you know, wherever you're making your meal choices. And in fact, I actually consult with a lot of chefs for Valentine's Day menus or sometimes for a whole February, you know, romance month. Um, and I have to steer them toward don't, don't put these certain kinds of things on your menu because they're, not necessarily an aphrodisiac, but they're not, they're not going to help. Um, you know, so it used to be, and luckily we've moved quite a bit away from that. But when I started consulting, it was the big Valentine's dinner. They always want to do something like a steak with a compound butter on top and then finish with like some crazy ice cream sundae with like heart cookies. And I'm like, no, mm. no, no, not, I'd want to take not a at all. Yeah, yeah, food yes. coma. <laughs> exactly. But yes, all anyone wants to do after that meal is take a nap. Um, and so the best thing you can do is choose lighter foods. Choose things like the salmon. Stay away from the fried foods. Um, you know, choose a lighter dessert or share a dessert. Something indulgent and share it. We are actually this week planning the menu for our couple's weekend intensive. Mm. Oh, so when we do our weekend intensives, we want full control over the whole environment. Uh -huh. And so we hire someone to do all the cooking that is, so we'll have to look at your book yeah, and that, pick that some is things that are, yeah. cause that's what you think of a, of a, a nice meal is like a steak and that okay. they'd probably do better if we made something more. Can you yeah. talk about spices? Oh, spices are, oh, spices are exciting, aren't they? Um, <laughs> So spices, I mean, basically all the spices are, are aphrodisiac. And if you look in our Vedic medicine, you can learn some amazing ways to use them, not just for sexual health, but for everything, like keeping warm in winter and um, keeping cool in summer. And <laughs> just any, you know, these incredibly useful ways to use something so inexpensive, just make your life a little bit better. It's amazing. Um, so I do love spices and the baking spices that are, you know, common, particularly around the holidays. They're also called the warming spices because they kind of do warm you up from the inside out. And so those are all wonderful to incorporate into an aphrodisiac meal. And I'm talking about like allspice and cinnamon and um, nutmeg. Mm. Those are great. I, so made, I made eggnog oh. for the first time, but I made it with oat milk because awesome. uh some people in our family can't really tolerate lactose yep i'm one of those and yep, you're amazing. one of those yeah and i i've never really loved those spices but i Ooh. made it and we had it warm and it was fabulous mm -hmm. it was that really wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah definitely added a little dark rum to it too it was very oh good. nice yep very good perfect so what other spices i you know that's the allspice and cinnamon nutmeg, I, I kind of get that sweet potato and, uh, mm. you know, baking and dessert yeah. kind of feel for that. What right. about uh, cooking like Italian food or something? What, what kinds of spices would, would be in aphrodisiac? So, you know, saffron is one of the most mm. legendary uh, spices um, as an aphrodisiac, and it's common throughout a lot of Mediterranean Mm -hmm. uh, cuisines. And, um, so that's a really, that's a fascinating one. And it, there was a study and gosh, I told you, I have like scrambled parent brain. There was a study a few years ago that actually showed some very concrete effects of saffron. And I can't think of one of them right now, mm -hmm. of course. <laughs> but, um, but originally, you know, it was such a luxury and it was such a beautiful color. And women 
would bathe in it to kind of give their skin a glow so they'd be more attractive. I mean, saffron has this very long history as aphrodisiac. And of course, it's it's a luxury. I mean, it's, it's the most expensive spice. So you feel like you're indulging mm-hmm. in something when you have saffron. Um, my favorite cocktail, my favorite like crazy easy cocktail is to take a glass of um, champagne. And it needs to be a, a brute style champagne or sparkling wine. Uh, toast a few saffron threads, just, you know, toast them in a, in a dry mm. pan, crush them with a mortar and pestle. So you've made a powder of them. Uh, mm. you need to toast them. So they become a little brittle mm-hmm. and then they become a powder very easily. Take a pinch of it, put it into the glass, the champagne flute, then pour the champagne in. Suddenly the champagne, as it goes into the glass, it just turns this amazing golden color. And it also, the saffron also gives it a slightly savory aroma. And you mm-hmm. almost feel like you're having this indulgent meal in a glass. That's- oh, that sounds fabulous. That sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. Your yeah, family I, does a lot of saffron. Well, I'm, I'm half Persian. And so oh. you know, saffron rice is, I, I mean, it's a yes. staple. I grew up with that. Delicious. Yeah, it's, it is a delicious. But yeah, saffron is like gold. Yeah. It's really, it's really Yes, expensive. it is. Yes. <laughs> um, so saffron is, you know, and then probably the spice that, that people um, are becoming most familiar with now, which is turmeric, is, mm-hmm. of course, also historically quite a legendary aphrodisiac. And, and you've heard of all of these health, healthful properties of turmeric. Of course, the odd thing about turmeric is I, I, most people don't realize it has to be, quote, activated. So you have to mix it with something generally either a fat Mm. So like an oil, like a, um, like, uh, like an avocado oil or something, or with, um, he, uh, something like curcumin, which is black pepper. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can't, you can't access most of its nutritive properties without it being activated by, by something else, um, which people don't realize. But once you do it, um, it does have all these incredible, you know, anti-inflammatory and circulatory and, yeah, it's pretty much good for everything. <laughs> yeah. And I would imagine it's much more uh, absorbed in the body if it's a food than if it's a, a vitamin. Right, exactly. And just with, as with, you know, most everything, it's, you're going to, your body's going to absorb it much better mm-hmm. if you can get it from a natural source. Absolutely. Yeah. That's very interesting. And are your, are your recipes, do they... F- uh, have that complement and balance? Like, do you recommend this dish and this dish? You know, cause I know like rice and beans make a complete protein or something. Oh, right. like that. Um, not necessarily. I mean, most of my, I, yeah, I, I mean, you know, mostly it's like here, you know, here's a great way to cook your salmon. Um, and not necessarily saying, and here are the three side dishes to um, to serve with it. We've started doing that a little bit on EatSomethingSexy.com with our recipes, um, saying, you know, here are great, great compliments for it to, you know, to make with it, and linking to mm-hmm. other, linking to other recipes because you can do that so much more easily um, online than you can in a book. So, um, but yeah, it's a great point. I should next book. Give me an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that would be really fun. Yeah, you know, I, I just had an idea because the Valentine's Day is coming up. This is going to be our uh, 25th wedding anniversary. We, we oh, were married wow. on Valentine's Day. And so we are going to be celebrating down in Costa Rica. Oh, we, have a, kind of a ha- we have a house there and kind of the, you know, nice and, and secluded, just the two of us. I was thinking that would be great to cook a meal together. And, you know, what would be your suggestion on a, on a really nice Valentine's Day mm. dinner that we could make together and, and that would be in your kind of aphrodisiac realm? Oh, so I immediately think of uh, just get some local fresh seafood, uh-huh. make uh, maybe a tropical fruit salsa. Um, you know, mangoes, mangoes, limes, these are all aphrodisiac ingredients. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, keep it very simple like that. Okay. Yeah. Fresh seafood. That sounds really good. And maybe some guava. And I wonder if, what about if you, um, made like not ice cream, but like an icy with the fruit. Oh, like a little, a fresh fruit granita or something. Yeah. That would be wonderful. Yeah. Yes. We'll just have to bring some saffron with us. Yeah. And <laughs> Perfect. Is there a recipe in one of your books that 
you know, we would be maybe bring the book down with us that we could reference. Ooh. Um, I don't, I can't think if there's anything that it's funny. I'm trying to think what has tropical fruit in it. And I'm like, I, I, I have a recipe. This is sounds so crazy. It's moist mango meatloaf, but I don't, I don't see meatloaf as generally being a uh, Valentine's day. That was sort of like, <laughs> you know, a midweek kind of, Hey, let's just, although I did make it in heart, little tiny heart shaped pans once in my husband's like I guess it's date night <laughs> <laughs> I gave a little heart-shaped meatloaf um it was effective but um I'm trying to think what else has tropical fruit in it um gosh there are some wonderful seafood recipes for sure um so yeah, yeah it, as far as seafood what, what would you suggest as far as a, a... I don't know what's going to be fresh and available when you're there mm -hmm. I so yeah I'd just be guessing yeah Okay, we're we're gonna have to go to like a local market or something. That'll be fun, and, mm -hmm. then, and and really cook something up. Maybe even go fishing. Uh, oh yeah! Oh yeah! yeah. That would be really fun. Some deep sea fishing or whatever. Yeah, that would be good. So so yeah, this is uh, really exciting. We we can maybe uh, bring your book down with us and and try some recipes uh, for our twenty fifth. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to hear how it goes. Yeah. And congratulations! Nice. Happy anniversary. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Um, so tell us, uh, where can people pick up your book? Where can they find you know, the books, I should say, all five of them, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so they are, you know, distributed across the U.S. and Canada and actually a few other countries as well. I know I know they're in England and Australia. Mm -hmm. um, but they are obviously Amazon is probably the number one place where people get them. They can be special ordered from any neighborhood bookstore. If you want to support a local business, that is easily done. Um, and like the, a lot of the bigger uh, book retailers will have them, particularly around Valentine's Day, they'll have them in stock. So. Okay, that's great. And you've been mentioning the, the website that people can go to for more information, right? Yeah. EatSomethingSexy.com. EatSomethingSexy.com. That's that's a little. That's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> and and there it's uh, there's more information about you know what you do and and ideas and thoughts. We on, have uh, yeah, we have great information there. We have information on, like we have a whole dictionary of aphrodisiac ingredients. What ingredients are aphrodisiac? why are they aphrodisiac? We have those lists of the best foods for men and women, like I mentioned, tons and tons of recipes, wine suggestions, cocktail recipes. Um, we have a woman who puts together whole romantic dinner plans with the menu oh, and even ideas for like how to serve it, music to play, the whole thing. So we've, we've got a wealth of information there. That sounds awesome. Yeah, they used to say a way to a man's heart is through his stomach, but <laughs> apparently it gets you somewhere else too. If you do it right. <laughs> well, Amy Riley, we want to thank you so much for being on our podcast today. This has been a lot of fun and uh, informative for us. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. This has been great. I want to thank all of you for joining us today on Couple Synergy. Our passion is in helping couples and people have happy and healthy relationships. And this podcast gives us a fun way of bringing our knowledge and expertise to you, our listeners. For all of you listening, please let us know how you enjoyed the show. If you have any questions, comments, or topic suggestions, please email us at contact at couplesynergy.com. For more information about Couple Synergy and our programs such as Relationship 101, the home study course, the Couples Weekend Intensive, which is coming up this April, April 20th to 23rd in beautiful Colorado, and our premier coaching program called Couple to Couple, look us up online at couplesynergy.com. And if you know someone who could benefit from this episode, please download it and share it. And thank you for listening. Until next time, synergize your life and synergize your love. You have been listening to Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Couple Synergy was recorded, edited, and produced by Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Voiceover and music entitled Breathe and Let Go was recorded and composed by Gina Gonzalez.